has a party in Puerto Rico. Or he notes that his fans, his people, will be able to celebrate a great Christmas the way they want to, the first Christmas that they can really celebrate that way after what he says, everything that they had to endure and go through after the hurricane. And added inspiration for Pedraza tonight as his two-year-old son, Dylan, made the trip to New York, is here at the fight. You see that section he's walking through. A sea of blue and gold. Many Ukrainian fans right there lining Pedraza. That demeanor, that disposition you see out of Pedraza, that has been present throughout the entire promotion to this title unification bout. It was not a way in nor a stare down overflowing in emotion or bravado or trash talk. These are veteran pros at the top of their game with great respect for each other. Will Pedraza be able to solve the problem? Vasily Lomachenko. As the WBO lightweight champion has arrived in the ring. And with a new look here at Madison Square Garden, all the grand history, Pedraza steps up solo to a laser light show, spotlighting the lightweight titleist. How about that? Cage him in, a wall of lasers. Now the lights dim and the music blasts just a little louder and that Ukrainian flag can be seen as Vasily Lomachenko with the dazzling foot speed and athleticism so angular and dynamic is ready to make his walk. The story of Lomachenko is often told in headlines of retaining pound for pound status for another TKO win for the champ. But you talk to him long enough and what you'll really hear is the story of a proud son, a Ukrainian son, Loma. division champion the fastest to win world titles in three different weight classes as he sprints out in front of his team a quickened pace and a big smile for the WBA lightweight champion of the world as his team follows far behind, including his father, Anatoly, who's almost always tucking himself away from the spotlight. 
But Vasily will talk about his father's ability as a trainer, and you will see it in the ring in moments. A dad who took him out of boxing for four years when he was a boy to make him take traditional Ukrainian dance classes. Thus the brilliant footwork. A dad who has seemingly solved so many opponents before the fight even begins. Who crafted this guy. Lomachenko told us yesterday, I have one more dream in my head, one more goal. I want to prove to everyone that my father's a genius. That motivates me. My fights write my father's history. He keeps writing new boxing history. As MSG has become a sea of blue and gold Ukrainian laser beams here. Just two men opposite each other, both with world championship belts, both willing to take on the challenge to unify. ESPN.com's pound for pound best fighter in the world against the WBO champion, Jose Pedraza, who's overflowing with confidence, determined to deliver back to Puerto Rico one of the great upsets. He is skilled, he is talented, and he is capable. Is he good enough for Loma? Let's find out. And for that, we send it up to the ring to the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Hulu Theater here at Madison Square Garden in New York City as Bob Aaron's Top Rank Incorporated presents the featured bout of the evening brought to you by GEICO. This unification title attraction is sanctioned by the WBA, the President Gilberto Jesus Mendoza, Supervisor George Martinez, the WBO President and Supervisor is Francisco Valcarcel, along with the New York State Athletic Commission. Judging at ringside for this, our main event from New Jersey, Joseph C Pasquale, from New York, Tom Schreck, and from New Jersey, Steve Weisfeld. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the unified WBA and WBO lightweight championship of the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world on ESPN, live from New York City, it's showtime! Introducing to you first on my right, the WBO world champion fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing black trunks with gold trim and hailing from Sidra, Puerto Rico. He weighed in at 134.2 pounds. With a record of 25 wins and one loss, he has 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the two weight division world champion in his seventh world title appearance. Please welcome the current and defending WBO lightweight champion of the world, introducing Jose Sniper Pedrosa. And his opponent across the ring, the WBA champion fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black, green, and yellow trunks, Haley from Akirman, Ukraine. His weight, 134.4 pounds, a two-time Olympic gold medalist. His professional record stands at 11 wins, one loss, with nine wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, in his 12th world title appearance, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the three-weight division world champion, the pound-for-pound pound star of boxing, and the current and defending WBA lightweight champion of the world, introducing Vasily Loma Lomachenko. And now introducing our referee in charge of this bout, he'll be giving instructions, Harvey Dock. 
See that look in Lomachenko's eyes and he just flips the switch to total focus. The Loma chant is raining down up. here in New York. Not often the case that you have a Puerto Rican world champion booed in New York. Loma, the attraction, by far. Okay, boxers, we went over the instructions earlier. As a reminder, obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck. So here we go to unify the lightweight belts. Lomachenko, Pedraza. Glad you're with us. Joe Tessitore alongside Timothy Bradley and Mark Kriegel, Bernardo Asuna, our ace ringside reporter. Tim, what do you look for early on? Well, I'm going to look for the game plan right now from, from both fighters. Right now, Pedraza's choosing to come forward and attacking Loma right now. Loma's going to be just calculated right now. He's been out of the ring for a while. And he's going to just look, give just a little look at Pedraza. Right now is when Lomachenko starts downloading your information. For Pedraza, he has to be faithful to his skill set. Do what you do best, jab and move. Has the height advantage, has the reach advantage to do that. But in doing so, do you offer up countering opportunities to the crafty Lomachenko? Testing a little bit of range. As always, watch the footwork of Lomachenko. Sublime. See, Loma fainted right there. He stepped in, and he just just got a little look at Pedraza. He saw Pedraza pull straight back, so look for Loma to follow him out with the straight left hand. That's what Pedraza says. I can't stay in front of him. Also look for Lomachenko's right foot to get outside Pedraza's. That's exactly how you keep a right-handed fighter off balance and you make him reach with his right hand when you keep it outside like Lomachenko likes to do. Lomachenko will come around you from that side and throw the uppercuts to the body. Become a signature shot. Lomachenko firing off that left uppercut when he got into range. It was just off the mark. Pedraza right there a few moments ago noticed that Loma likes to lean to his right. Likes to rock to his right. Oh, there's a left hand from Lomachenko. As he was timing Pedraza. Then he touches him with a left hand to the body. What I was saying was Pedraza landed a nice little right hand on Loma as Loma likes to suddenly sometimes like to lean to his right just like there He does that often He can come back with the left hook as well Got a three division world champion in Lomachenko against a two division world champion in Pedraza as we are here with our very own two-division world champion in Timothy Bradley. So take us through what you see as the good and the bad. Oh, let's look at the good. Excellent timing. He understands what to do at every moment in the ring. Just about every single moment in positioning. He gets in a position where he can hit you for the most time. You didn't see it yet. And you can't hit him. He gets around you. But the bad, like I told you, he rocks to his right quite often. Lomachenko does. And you can time him with the right hand or left hook. Now let's look at Pedraza, the good. He throws effective right hand. He got countered when he threw a right hand that last round. But he has a sharp right hand. He needs to use it. That's the punch that knocked down Loma. In the bat, he fades second half. You cannot fade against the Matrix, Lomachenko.
Here was that left Second hand down. halfway through Second that first down. round by Lomachenko. It lands flush down. and clean. That's timing. That is exactly how you time a fighter. But you see where he's at. He's directly in front of you. That's excellent timing by Loma. You see the game plan of Pedraza. Pedraza, he box every now and then, and he tries to press the action. Loma. Loma's just sitting back, very calculated, looking for his opportunities, making Pedraza think and make mistakes. But this idea that Pedraza doesn't want to engage is counterfeit. Ask Antonio Moran from two fights ago. Ask Ray Beltran. He's able to earn the belt against Ray Beltran. That was back in August in Arizona. It was a 12-round unanimous decision. And Pedraza finished very strong that night. Scored a knockdown in the 11th round. Beat him badly in the 12th round. And consider that was on the road in front of Beltran's hometown fans who were chanting Mexico, Mexico all night long for Ray Beltran. One of the great inspiring stories of recent years in boxing. Now he's here at MSG. Seemingly always a place that would favor Puerto Rican world champions. But as Loma says, this is my home now. And the Ukrainian fans here in New York and those who travel in, they have taken to it to root on the pound for pound king. Pajaza now taking his attention downstairs, landing a nice little sneaky right hand to the body of Loma. He's trying to slow him down. That would be very useful to do so. And the body work could be effective in getting that done. I've never seen Loma sit this still in front of a guy before. Trying to time that left hand again to me. He's a pretty skilled boxer. The great pedigree that he's trying to figure out. Comes in with a lead left hand that time against Pedraza. That's exactly what I was talking about from the first round. Pedraza pulled straight back. Loma followed him out right there. He caught him with a straight left hand down the middle. Stayed on those train tracks and was able to score. Pedraza's got to keep him at the end of that jab. He's got five inches in reach, and he needs to use it. Well, Pedraza's throwing one punch at a time. He needs to throw combinations against Loma. You're not going to hit him with one punch. He's going to make you miss. But the second and third shot may have a chance. But that right hand, which has scored, is set up by the jab. Coming to the end of two here. Lightweight unification bout. Hey! See all the Ukrainian flags here at Madison Square Garden tonight. As we're ready for round number three. Another left hand There's came a, in from Loma another time in the last round. Left hand right here from Loma. Pedraza leaning straight back, pulling straight back, trying to get out of range. Didn't get out fast enough. And Loma made him pay, followed him right out. Pedraza, that's a bad mistake, a flaw that Madraza, Pedraza has. And Loma's going to continue to make him pay if he continues to do that. There was a moment where Loma just dipped to the right and leaned to the right the way you say he is flawed to do if you're going to find one flaw. And yet it wasn't a full effort right hand driving down from Pedraza. He has to take advantage of those moments as well. You know, you sit there, you look at the record of Lomachenko. You know the great record, 396-1 and one as an amateur, the couple gold medals. And then 11-1, and one, that blemish as a pro. He's the pound-for-pound -pound best fighter in the world. So what about the one? Well, maybe that's actually the only answer there is. His second pro fight, he fought for a world title in his second pro fight. That is absolutely unheard of. And it was against the veteran Orlando Salido who came in overweight. It was controversial. Lomo was getting hit by low blows. It was rugged. It was pressure. It was an absolute brawl. And then finally Vasily figured things out and started coming on strong and had Salido hurt at the end, was sweeping the late rounds, but it was too little too late. And that's the one blemish. Looking at Lomachenko, you look at all his fights, he's 413 and 2. So this is guy, we talk about Alabama. This is a guy yes. since early adolescence who's been fighting the best fighters in the world. And Jose Pedraza holding his own. 
And this is, Jose Pedraz is the antithesis of Orlando Salido, who I mentioned before. Who's gonna just maul and make it a dirty fight and do anything it takes. But it was, that was a necessary, a necessary night in the education of Vasily Lomachenko. He says, that's the night that taught me to fight dirty. No, to be a pro, that you're no longer in the amateurs. But he's, right? but he's also, Loma's also learning something about himself right now with, with Pedraza. He's testing the limits of his shoulder. We have not seen the right hook. There's Loma, and there's the footwork. Remember, he's coming off reconstructed shoulder surgery. He hurt his shoulder in his last fight. It was a sensational 10th round TKO against Jorge Linares. Loma went down in that fight. He was knocked down in the sixth round by a right hand. He got up, had that body shot, that drop Linares. It's one of the most curious and admirable elements listening to Loma. It's not just the victory. It's the manner of victory. And I think that's what causes him some concern about Pedraza, at some level, he's such a perfectionist. His father is such a perfectionist that looking not great is almost tantamount to a defeat. Body work from Pedraza here as we close out the third. Hey. Coming down that center row at the Second Center out. of Madison Square Second Garden. Out. A room mostly filled with Canadian fans. Look at that left eye of Lomachenko. You can see some redness. An abrasion there. As they were putting the grease around that left eye of the WBA lightweight champion. Title unification. Pedraza, the WBO champion. Anytime Pedraza stays still for just a split second, Loma follows him out. Makes him, forces him with the pressure to commit a mistake by pulling back. What did that tell you, Tim? Don't stay still. Well, he, let's hear what they're saying in that corner of Pedraza, Bernardo. His stepfather, Luis Espada, said, look, you've got to use your length. You've got to stay more active and use angles. Hit and move. Use angles against the guy in boxing who's perhaps the most angular. And he just done something he told us he would do is he switched up and he's gone southpaw. Let's see if he stays that way as he's poking out that right jab. He's committed to it for now. And yeah, when he keeps the fight outside and he uses feet and he stays busy and stay consistent, he does look good. But once he stands still for just a split second, Loma comes on with a couple of com couple co combinations of himself. I don't know what's going to happen. But I don't see this. His wide differential between the two fighters. I still got a pretty close fight here. It is a close fight. But you see, Loma's already planted the seed already. And now he closes that gap, lets those hands go for a moment. And then puts a right hand, that jab, southpaw jab to the body. One of the things that turning southpaw will do for Pedraza is alleviate him from the, 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 the punch that he fears most, which is Loma coming around his right side and then shooting a right or left uppercut to the body. Well, what I'm looking for is for Loma to throw the right hook, and he hasn't thrown it yet. He has not thrown his right hook yet at all. Why do you think that is, Timmy? I think that, I think that it's on his mind. He's unsure. He doesn't want to hurt it. The surgery you're talking about. Yeah, the surgery. Absolutely. I'm looking for him to use the right hook with conviction. He hasn't thrown it once yet. Saw three punch combination moments ago as he tried to get that straight left in behind the jab. Now he doubles up that right jab. a short left hand on the inside there from Lomachenko and then that lead left hand again that he has found some success with falls hey. in that time and Pedraza was unable to measure him up end of four here for the lightweight unification as we will check in with Kevin Andre and Stephen A gentlemen
A Tessa measured start by Lomachenko. Pedraza is holding his own. The shoulder has been a big storyline coming it in. Andre, how is it impacting this fight? I mean, so far, so good for Loma. I'm not seeing him throw a lot of right hooks. I'm not overly alarmed about that. I mean, he just had surgery six and a half months ago, so I don't think it's hurting him. I think he's just overly, you know, cautious and aware, again, which is normal. Pedraza's putting up a good fight. I have it even right now. We'll see how it goes as you go into the fifth round. I got Lomachenko up three rounds to one. I think he's been more active. I think he's had a couple of floor reads to steal a couple of rounds. Obviously, in terms of the fight, it's close. But at the same time, I think that Lomachenko lost or stole a couple of rounds with a, a little bit of flurries midway through the round. I'm watching Second for that down. right hook that he hasn't Second thrown. Down. That could obviously emanate from the surgery. So I'm looking at that a lot. Test well. some tough, tough rounds to score early on. Yeah. They are. I would side a little more with Stephen A. in saying that the most distinct Watch your hands. Watch your hands. effective Watch your hands. punching Watch your hands. have been the left hands that have gotten attention in the midst of these rounds from Lomachenko. But there isn't a big gap between Pedraza and Lomachenko as it stands right now. Start of round number five. Again, you see Loma leans to his right. See, he goes to his right right there. Throw that right hand down the middle. Throw it. And finish with the hook. And throw the hook towards the shoulder so you don't miss Loma's head. Or Pedraza. You see all the probes and the foot yep. movement? All that's designed to get you out of position. He it does its job. He wants to force you out. The pressure, he stays close. He has short arms. He needs to get close to work. Lomachenko. Short arms with quick hands. Short arms, quick hands. He has the feet of a dancer. The hands almost of a kung fu master. And he talked a lot about that when we sat with him yesterday of saying that's exactly how he wanted to approach a good chunk of this fight. And you're seeing it with some of the hand movement now. One of the things that I haven't seen from Loma yet is he hasn't stepped around like he normally does. Give I some credit to Pedraza for that. How so, Mark? Well, he, he knows where he wants to go. He's very conscious of him moving around that left foot. And he's prevented it from happening. That's why he goes southpaw sometimes. But listen, this is a pretty skilled guy in his own right. That was some of the best work from Pedraza right there. As he was able to fire off the right hand in the combination that followed as he's back orthodox now here. But, you know, you mentioned that, not stepping around. If you asked me to describe Lomo in any one way, I would tell you jumping off and stepping around and getting that angle to the right where all of a sudden you don't even realize he's no longer in front of you. He's to the side of you, and then he's landing his punches. And, and, and you see other fighters, they're amazed. Oh, how did he get there? You haven't seen that from him in no, this fight. Not yet. I just I want to give Pedraza don't his head. respect here. He's not applying for the job of the world's greatest Puerto Rican fighter. But if he distinguishes himself tonight, it's a title he'll have. Oh. I mean, if he distinguishes himself tonight, you're talking the family of Tito Trinidad, Miguel Cotto, and beyond. As all of a sudden, after what was continued good work in the fifth round, Pedraza has to fight back against Lomachenko. But I like the steady work rate and what he was able to accomplish here in round number five, Pedraza. I like it as well. Doing a good job working his hands and finding his opportunity. Time. No doubt. Folks, we are commercial-free throughout this title unification down from here on out. Oh, here's a left hand landed by Loma. He times this. He knocks down the jab of Pedraza and throws a straight left hand down the middle. Good shot. 
blocked by Loma. Those little things that create opportunity. Yeah, he knocked it, he, he knocked it down, and he, he, you know, Pedraza sat there to take that left hand on. That's kung fu, fellas. <laughs> That's what he said. There are the CompuBox numbers, the total punches as it stands right now. Lomachenko, a 60 to 30 connect advantage. You can see Pedraza's work rate is high, but his percentage is low. His work rate has to be high because he has to keep this boy up off of him. I'll tell you what Pedraza does not look like right now is a 35 to 1 dog. You know, boxing odds are, I, I disregard them all the time. Obviously, you got the dead money with the big fighter. And whenever two guys are in the ring, all it takes is one punch. I defer to you on gambling matters, but <laughs> it's apropos Jeremy Shaft's marvelous film, 42 to 1. It's coming out on Tuesday. And Buster Douglas is sitting ringside here tonight. Pedraza catching Loma when Loma sits still for just a moment, trying to move in, moving straight in. I've never seen Loma really move straight in like that, like he's doing right now. Well, Loma just fired success. off a short left hand that just was off the mark, but that's not. As you could tell, he was thinking about it, and he fired it off. Comes again with it. And now probes with that southpaw jab for just a moment as Pedraza tries to create something. As yeah. he switches stances again. Pedraza, a versatile fighter. Loma gets that lead foot outside of Pedraza's left foot when Pedraza is orthodox to land that straight left hand down the middle. What feet? It's all about positioning with Loma. He likes to get himself in a position where he can hit you and you can't hit him. But he, he never knows an awkward moment. It's timing. What I like about Loma is he does everything at the front end. He could do it off the back end, but I like the fact that he's aggressive. You know, he's not a he's not a fighter that just wants to just play defense. He plays defense, but he also also has offense behind him. He could be May Mayweather-esque only if he wanted to, but I think that's what makes him such a fan favorite and such an exciting guy to watch is he will make the fight. He will be willing to be the aggressor. He's disgusted by the thought of a fight being talked about as boring. I think it has to do with the way he embraces risk. Catch up with you. You move up a little bit. You move to the right. Move up to the left. Don't let him catch. Don't let him too close to you. Keep yourself away. Look how Loma sets this left hand up. He ducks in the cubby hole right there and comes up with a straight left hand. Watch him as he dips. Makes a miss and then makes him pay. That's what I'm talking about. That's aggressive defense right there. Beautiful shot by Loma. I think these left hands by Lomachenko have been leading the way all night long. I understand that we haven't had a gap throughout the early rounds. I understand that Pedraza is doing his very best to work it at his style. But at least once or twice around, you get these left hands out of Lomachenko that when you're sitting here scoring the fight, they make you lean that way. Because every defensive move leads to something offensive. And, you know, before, it's time to cite really one of the most influential figures in boxing, Anatoly Lomachenko. He had Vozdik, he has Usyk, he's created Loma. His influence on boxing is extraordinary, and he's the only trainer in the game who doesn't talk. 
does. <laughs> Doesn't care to. The no. father of Vasily Lomachenko, who, as you said, helped craft a light heavyweight champion, a current cruiserweight champion, and his son, ESPN.com's pound for pound best in the world. I once asked the strength and conditioning coach, Cecilio Flores, who worked in the camp, what did the father tell you? When did this start? He goes, oh, before Loma was born. It was all planned before he was born. Every time Pedraza tries to retreat, he tr and he goes out too wide, there's Loma with the combination. There it is again. Three punch combination from Lomachenko. Keep him up, keep him up. Pedraza has his moments when he's out long and he throws his combinations from a distance. And he gets out in time and don't allow Loma to close the gap on him for returning fire. He, he spoke of the necessity of lateral movement, but he's really too much in and out on a straight line. Yes. It's a good point, Mark. Yes, it is. Nice loop in left hand right there by Pajaza. As Loma was going to the right. Just changing the trajectory right there of his, of his punch. Then he goes with an uppercut to the body and tried to come back with a right hand as Loma continues to take short steps forward and then goes to the body himself. And now a good exchange in the middle of the ring here in the closing 20 seconds here of round number seven as these champions willing to pick up the pace a bit. And a three-punch combination from Lomachenko. Just missed with a left hand, and Pedraza backs him up. Not much landed flush, tuck, 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 but a good tuck. amount of aggression to get the, the crowd's attention. The Our world title fight here, and then come February, another one. Alvarez Kovalev, the rematch. They put on a show this summer. It'll be for the WBO light heavyweight world title the night before the Super Bowl from the star in Frisco, Texas. Eladir Alvarez and Sergey Crusher Kovalev. Kovalev is sitting ringside as well tonight as we make our way back here in the Hulu Theater. Anatoly and Lomachenko plot their strategy. Meanwhile, that is Luis Espada, the stepfather and trainer to Jose Madraza. Madraza himself was a great amateur. We talk so much about Lomachenko, one of the all-time great amateurs, but... Madraza represented Puerto Rico in the 2008 Olympic Games, was a gold medalist in the Central American Caribbean Games, and a three-time Puerto Rican national amateur champion. Two-division world champion as Lomachenko has increased his output now for four straight rounds. CompuBox tallying everything for us tonight. And the arrow trends upward for Lomachenko as the fight goes deeper. Let's check in with Bernardo. You know, Luis Espada said, stay far away from him. Make Loma come to you and then catch him as he's coming in. And don't stand right in front of him for prolonged periods of time. Problem is, if you don't catch him, what then Loma's offering up? But I like the fact that Pedraza looping an overhand right right there. Just grazed Loma, but I like the fact that Pedraza's going down to the body of Loma. There's a body shot in the mix of that exchange. That pressure from Loma is something else. He makes you make mistakes with all that pressure. There he goes with a right hand to the body. He got just under the left elbow of Pedraza. But Pedraza steps forward. And now Pedraza with that jab and a left hand behind it. That's exactly what Pedraza has to do. He has to follow him out. When he's trying to take a rest from throwing some punches, he needs to follow him out with his own punches. And he did it right there. 
There aren't a lot of moments of rest, though, with Lomachenko. Think about where we were a year ago. Neither of these guys are lightweights. Now they're both champions. That is a slip. You can see the comfort with Lomachenko when he's right in that pocket, right in the kitchen. He'll stand right in front and be willing to dodge and be willing to throw. Right about now, Pedraza's got to be thinking, I wish I'd gone to the body more earlier. Yes. I mean, easier said than done, but you got to wonder, what can I do to slow this guy down? Well, when he went to the body, he slowed him down. Comes in, Pedraza searching for a right hand to be tied. Time! End of eight here in New York to unify the lightweight titles. Let's go check in with Kevin, Andre, and Stephen A. again. Test two-thirds of the way through. We're approaching the championship rounds. Andre Ward, how do you have it so far? I mean, I've got it 5-3, Lomachenko right now. Um, I think he's doing just enough to stay ahead. He's not dominating like he typically would. Pedraza's still in the fight. He hasn't packed it in mentally, but he's ahead certainly. And if it keeps going like this, I see him slowly breaking Pedraza down and, and potentially stopping him before the, before the distance. I got him six rounds to two, Lomachenko. I think he's a constant aggressor. I think that he's connected on the numerous combinations in the middle of the round, and you could see him wearing down Pedraza as we speak. Pedraza's going to the floor. The reason why he was on the canvas for a second there, to some degree, you can, you can attribute exhaustion to that. He's wearing him His down. His legs are getting That's weak. That's what I'm saying. The legs are getting weak. Tess, Lomachenko promised us that Pedraza has a style he doesn't like. We're seeing that play out here, but he's hanging around. He is. Round number nine here. Here's the problem for Pedraza. He's not losing rounds by much, but he's losing them clearly. So the question is, how do you get back in? He's not that kind of puncher. Pretty much the still same thing going on. Loma trying to get close to land. Pedraza trying to keep his distance and work from far out. Nice time right hand there by Pedraza. Good job splitting the guard with the jab as well. Loma looks good, but you have to wonder, is it what he expects of himself? Is he satisfied? I don't know that he's ever satisfied. And now Pedraza getting some work to that belt line when Loma got to the inside. Stop, 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 stop. Don't push his head down. <laughs> if Pedraza said, Loma seems like a nice guy, but he's really not. He'll step on your foot, he'll hit you behind the head. He ain't that nuts. No, he well, I said you go back and you watch tape, and something we've noticed before, too, every so often Loma may call out to the referee, distract you, and then throw a punch. <laughs> you turn, you look at the referee as if something's going to be said to you, and next thing you know, here comes the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world throwing a punch at you. you Tim, you ever do that? Uh, you need to do whatever you need to do to get an advantage in this ring. It's That's prize yes. fighting. That's yes. Not amateur boxing. <laughs> Well, Tim, how does Pedraza close the gap? How does he get back in this? Pedraza's doing well right now. Loma's not really having any good moments this round. I haven't seen just far. Pedraza's trying to use his footwork, and he needs to let his hands go and be a little bit more consistent and be solid with his defense. See how his head is moving everywhere? He might as well put his hands in his pocket because he's not doing anything off the defense. Too many defensive moves. Assuming that the judges see it somewhat like our esteemed analysts, like I do, 
Oh, good uppercut from Loma that time. The driver leaning forward. That's why he was able to hit him with that uppercut. How did he get it without a big shot? He has to let that right hand go. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> it's the left hand. It's a perfectly timed shot. Beautiful shot. This is a shot that landed pretty much all night long for Loma. Making a miss. That right hand coming right over the top. Another straight left. Here it is again. Pedraza moving straight back. Trying to get out of range. Fighting on the line, the straight line. Not getting off his head off to the side. Easy work for Loma. Countering him well. Those points were yours. But if you touch him and just stay there, you're going to be in trouble. Hey, if you need to tie up, tie up. Come on, this is your night. This is a great fight. Let's go, let's go. I think both those statements could be questioned. Is it his night? Is it a great fight? It's a pretty good one. Pretty good fight. For Pedraza to pull an upset? Certain things would have to happen, and it would need to be an exceptional fight from Pedraza. But here we are arriving at round number 10 with still opportunity existing. Consider the level of expectation that Lomachenko stirs up. You expect him to make the other guy quit. I haven't seen anything close to quitting from Pedraza tonight. No. We were here a year ago where he overwhelmed Guillermo Rigonet. I understand it was a different weight, but still, we haven't seen anything close to that. That's when he picked up that nickname, Nomaschenko. But Johnson throwing the right uppercut right there. That's very smart. Loma well, had that stretch of four straight opponents who quit on the stool against him. And in some senses, I think that what he was talking about yesterday is he's a prisoner of his own expectations. There's a right hand to the body from Pedraza. Came at the end of the combination. Seemingly unaffected, Lomachenko comes forward behind that southpaw jab. There's another right hand that gets around the guard and scores to the body from Jose Pedraza. So he's found a target that he likes here in round 10. Mark, I'm curious to know, do you... Are you impressed by Loma tonight, Mark? This is not the Loma that we've come to know, fear, worship, no. But I haven't seen the right hook, nor have I seen that right uppercut to the body, which right. would become his signature puncher. I have to agree with you, Mark. Well, maybe you know something on the way in. <laughs> Pedraza's boxing well right now. Mm -hmm. Time in Loma before he gets to the spot where he wants to be. There goes your uppercut again. I think it's maybe his best round of the fight. It is. And that's the shot he needs it to land. Something different, something Loma hasn't seen. Come up the middle as Loma tried to get close to him. Left hand and then tries to chase him down. Pedraza fires back. Quick, quick. Good finish to the 10th round. I want to take you back to what happened in the ninth round from Lomachenko. And Tim, I will show it to you here in spectacular 4D replay. There's the uppercut and then the follow-up. That's a sneaky punch right there from Loma. Anytime your hands leave your face, the middle is always open. Lomachenko dipping underneath and coming up with the uppercut as Pedraza leaned forward just a little bit. Show you that uppercut again here. Watch this. There's a defense. Snuck a little uppercut as Pedraza tried to exit and get out. 
came out a little bit too wide and was hit with the uppercut. That was in the ninth. As now we head to the championship round. WBO champion Pedraza, WBA champ Lomachenko, and a sellout crowd here in New York. Pajaza came to fight tonight. I think all the running in the mountains in Vegas definitely did some good to his conditioning because he's in this fight right now. I actually think it's something else. I think that he thinks of himself as, as a champion again. He has good reason to. He's earned that status. It was a devastating blow to him, not just professionally, but personally when he lost to Javante Davis. His concentration was suspect that night, but he also said that he's, he's, he was better at a heavier weight. He was artificially light. Well, you just look at his frame and you can understand that. That happened back in January of 2017 in Brooklyn. And since then, he's been on that tear. And the win against Antonio Moran. And then, of course, we were ringside with the defeat of Ray Beltran to win this belt. He came on so strong at the end there. He scored a knockdown in the 11th round here. What will he offer in the 11th round against Lomachenko? But again, in neither of those fights was he risk averse. No. I think Pajaga has been a very difficult opponent. With left hand from Lomachenko, and then he backs it up and steps in and lands the combination. And here comes Basili. Standing right in the pocket. Short right hand, right hook. Strafing attack to the head. Lomachenko right in the center of the ring getting the best of Pedraza. Uppercut comes in. Look at the accuracy from Lomachenko. When he decides to go, does he ever. Lomachenko dominating round number 11. Pedraza in trouble. Shot after shot landing home. From the silly. Now he goes to the body. Back upstairs with the right hand. Uppercut comes in with the left. Another uppercut. At short distance. Turns it over. Takes that angle and scores with a massive uppercut. What a dominating performance here. And down goes Pedraza. An absolute beatdown. Now to finish, 20 seconds for the great Lomachenko to work here. Second knockdown score. Is this it? Cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. Sure? Yes. Yeah. He survives the round, but Lomachenko was absolutely sensational. Tell him I can. Can you? Chasing his hat, and you are wasting your stamina on that stuff. In the midst of the rally prior to the first knockdown, was just superb, Timmy. Leaning forward, pop your head up with the uppercut. Why not? Lomachenko landed it over and over. It comes over the top. You see here, Pedraza trying to hold on here. Got hit with a lot of clean punches in those exchanges. And down he goes. Small little short body shot by Loma. Lands to the liver of Pajaza. And down he went. And now the 12th and final round. As Lomachenko hit the gas pedal and never turned back in that 11th. Pedraza looks a little steadier on his feet here. Coming out trying to show something. The power quick, punches quick. landed the in the last round. 42 by Lomachenko. 42 power punches landed in that 11th round. 
Obviously, Lomachenko has adapted to something. Because the one punch you didn't see in that onslaught was the right hook. How about that uppercut by Lomachenko in that 11th round? And now, what can he do as the majority of the crowd is on their feet and the chain of Loma has gone up here in New York? And Pedraza is trying as best he can. Loma's taking his attention downstairs to the body to set up this attack. Pedraza still affected by that left hand to deliver from the last round. And the question now becomes, can Pedraza do anything better than survive? <laughs> have a willingness to do that. Well, he has an aggressive fighter coming at him. He's going to have to time him with a straight right hand. Kind of what, kind of like what Linares did. He needs to sit down and do it, though. Given what we've seen from, from recent opponents, survival is not an inconsiderable accomplishment. Isn't that true? Loma trying to corral him. He splits the guard with a left hand. Taking those short steps in. Coming up on the final minute of this title unification right, right. bout. Give Pedraza credit for getting through that 11th round and making his way here to this final minute of the 12th. Off the angle, just a short right hand from Loma. Can Pedraza he find a home for that left again. Well, Pedraza's on retreat. But right now, the question for Pedraza is can he survive what so many others could not? Yeah, absolutely right. That's what he's doing right now. He's trying to survive. Stop, stop, stop. He wanted a break. <laughs> so he went down for it. He wanted a break. <laughs> the break is more important than me. Well, at least he can say that he survived Lomachenko. Gonna make it to the finish line. Man, he was almost thrown off a cliff there in that 11th round. Just when you're wondering, how would Loma approach those championship rounds? Did you ever get the answer? That stretch of an offensive attack in the 11th round is as good as you will see. 42 power punches to define this fight. And a noticeable limp with Pedraza going back to his blue corner as the ringside positions will take a look at him. And Lomachenko should soon be gathering yet another belt. Stay with us for the judges. Top Rank Boxing on ESPN is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes to save you 15% or more on car insurance. That was Teofimo Lopez. He's now 11-0, one of the fastest rising stars in the sport. We saw Emmanuel Navarrete win the WBO Junior Featherweight World title, and then just moments ago, what an 11th round out of a silly Lomachenko. Let's look at the copy box final tally. The power punches. Look at that final column for Lomachenko. He landed 158 power punches. You had the uppercut in the 11th round. You had the left hand throughout. Dominating performance on power punches at 46%. Tremendous accuracy. Let's go here from the guys on the set. Stephen A. and Andre and Kevin. All right, Tess, thanks so much. You know, we came into the night wondering if winning would be enough for Vasily Lomachenko. Would he have to do it in style? We almost got it in the 11th round. Andre Ward, how did you see the fight? I had it eight rounds before for Lomachenko. Um, he was ahead for most of the fight after the sixth round. You could see a little ring rush. You could see a little hesitation with the right shoulder. But you forgot all about that when you saw that onslaught in the 11th round. That's probably one of the best rounds that I've ever seen. And that's why Lomachenko is who he is. He created separation. 
Anderson. He showed you why he's revered the way that he is and why he's considered such a special fighter. I tip my hat to him tonight, and even Pedraza. Pedraza could have packed it in. He could have gave up like a lot of guys. He didn't do that. Hats off to him, but Lomachenko did what he had to do tonight. I got Lomachenko nine rounds to three. Final score, 117-110. Obviously, he got a 10-8 round in the 11th. I thought that he pretty much uh, dominated the second half of the fight with the exception of the 10th round. Uh, you know what? I, the only shock that I walk away from here with, I'm shocked Pedraza survived. I really am. Tess, let's send it back down to you to see how the judges have it. Thank you, gentlemen. And for that, we send it up to the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Well, fans, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Tom Schreck scores about 119 to 107. Steve Weisfeld and Joseph Pasquale both scores about 117 to 109. All three in favor of the winner. He is now the unified WBA and WBO lightweight champion of the world. Vasily Loma Lomachenko. Vasily Lomachenko has unified the WBA and WBO lightweight world title. Pedraza tried as he could for the most part. Then came that 11th round. Up to the ring to Bernardo we go. All right, we're here with Vasily Lomachenko. Vasily, first man in your last nine fights to survive. What took you so long to figure him out? And uh, the translate a little bit. Aegis, translate me, please. All right, Aegis, what took him so long to figure him out? Because he was the first man after eight knockouts to go the distance with him. You know, he, he's a good, he's a true warrior, and he do, he do a very good job. So I respect Pedrasa, Pedrasa team, very, very good job. Thank you. Now you knew that he could be a tough opponent because of his style. How do you rate your performance? Are you happy with your performance tonight? Of course, of course, I'm happy. Of course, I I, I stay a little bit closer to my dream, to my goal. So I wanted to say happy birthday, Bob Arum, and I wanted to say thank you, my team and uh, all people who come to support me. Happy, uh, uh, thank you very much. How did the shoulder hold up? How, when did you get confident with your shoulder tonight? Ah, uh, Everything good. Uh, I don't have a problem, so I'm healthy 100%. Thank you. You had never done this. You have two belts tonight. You're unified. What does it mean to you? Oh, I think I told uh, later. Huh? Yeah, yeah, Ranchi, you were real, right? Some years after, it's not early. I told early. I don't want to repeat. One man. One belt, that's what Vasily Lomachenko wants at lightweight. Who do you want next? Of course, of course, I want uh, two more belts, and maybe maybe we can make in the next year fight with uh, Mikey Garcia. That's a fight that boxing needs. So Vasily Lomachenko wants to do this for his father, and he also wants to unify all the belts. Mikey Garcia has some business otherwise, but that is undoubtedly a fight that all fight fans would want to see. Your final thoughts, Mark, on Vasily Lomachenko's performance tonight. You know, I thought the Pedraza distinguished himself in not surrendering the way so many others had. Then that 11th round onslaught came. It was rather extraordinary. It took us some time to figure him out. You know, I knew Pedraza would be tough because he's long-rangey and he can box and he can do a lot of other things. He's very skillful. But Loma, once again, prevailed. He showed his class, the cream, like Dre always says, always rise to the top. That's a defer. And he is at the top of ESPN.com's pound-for-pound -pound list with good reason. Now two lightweight championship belts. Zerto Ramirez, Jesse Hart is a sensational super middleweight title fight coming up on ESPN Plus on Friday. Fun night in New York. A lot of great action capped by that sensational 11th round by Vasily Lomachenko. Now the WBA and WBO lightweight world titles. Sports Center is coming up right now. Enjoy the rest of your evening, everybody.